the country of Mexico is flooding. But it's also running out of water. That doesn't make sense. In 2022, there was at least eight floods in the country, killing several people and displacing thousands. But while this was happening, more often in southern and central Mexico, the northern states didn't have enough water to drink. Two thirds of Mexico was experiencing drought conditions and many cities reached day zero, which is when the water supplies are so low that the government turns off most water taps in the area. In fact, the water situation has been so bad that residents in some areas blocked highways and kidnapped municipal workers to demand more water supply. And it's not difficult to understand why the people of Mexico are so frustrated. This is not a new crisis. Mexico's population has grown rapidly. And more people means more pressure on groundwater. Take a look at this reservoir, for example. This NASA image was taken in 2015, and this is the same reservoir seven years later. The water today has almost vanished. And whatever water remains after this is managed terribly by local authorities. Mexico City loses a thousand liters of water every second because of an outdated water system. But if I'm being honest, that's not even the most shocking part. Mexico is a manufacturing site for many large corporations. I couldn't believe this report when it said that companies like Coca-Cola extract almost 300,000 gallons of water from this small Mexican town every day. That's half the size of an Olympic swimming pool. In fact, it's easier to find a bottle of Coke here than it is to find a glass of water. The more I digged into this story, the more I realized that the problem on top of everything else is of access. There's already very little water remaining, but between the people of Mexico and the corporations here, who gets more water and why? Okay, let's talk about water. Does anybody care that Mexico is running out of water? A lot of Mexico's struggle with water starts from where it's placed on the map. Mexico City, which is in the center, is surrounded by mountains and deep canyons. There are deserts in the north and rainforests in the south and east, which means that no two parts of Mexico experience the same kind of water problem. In North Mexico, the land is dry and there is little rainfall, even though cities here have relatively better water infrastructure. There's just not enough water because of the land itself. But when you travel down south, the challenges reverse. This is the region that receives more rainfall naturally. So the water crisis here doesn't come from lack of water, but lack of infrastructure. Fewer people are connected to the water grid and instead have to depend on open sources of water that are often unsafe and not accessible. And in the middle is central Mexico, which has a mix of these conditions, but faces a separate crisis of high population. Mexico City, with over 21 million people, sources its water from the groundwater aquifers. These are underground layers of rock and soil that contain water. And with a growing population, these aquifers dry up more quickly, the soil begins to crack and compress, leading to extreme drought conditions and causes Mexico City to sink nearly 20 inches every year. It's a real thing, and I'd recommend watching Canubis' video on Mexico City's water problem to understand this more. When you put all of this together, you realize that there's no one common solution that can be implemented throughout the country. Mexico is split into different pockets which have their own land conditions and sometimes these areas also have social differences, like the South, which has a large population of indigenous people. Most of them lack access to safe drinking water because they're often marginalized. And this means if Mexico wants to work on improving water availability across the country, it will need customized solutions, like building hard infrastructure in some places and working on replenishing the forests and land in another. And doing that takes more time, effort, and money. One of the main reasons is, is that the organization that is in charge of financing these kind of infrastructures does not have enough resources. They have to take decisions and put more resources into other kind of projects, etc. This is a really personal point of view. I think this is critical because water is the basis of any economic development of any nationwide improvement in any sense or sector. Eduardo isn't wrong here. Imagine a country without water. There will be no agriculture, no sanitation, no people, and eventually no economy. Which is why it's surprising to me that in the name of supporting their economy, Mexico has been allowing large corporations to use their water with barely any restrictions. I mean, it just sounds like another case of casual capitalism. 
but surely there is something that can be done to avoid this. Okay, so to understand why companies are using so much of Mexico's limited water, we have to go back to 1994. I'd also like to welcome here the representatives from Mexico and Canada. And here they are our partners in the future that we are trying to make. This is when the North American Free Trade Agreement was signed by Canada, Mexico, and the US, creating a trade block in North America. And soon after that, foreign manufacturers rushed to Mexico because it provided cheap labor and water. And since then, these companies have basically been using Mexico's resources at extremely low rates. According to this report, Coca-Cola pays about 10 cents for every 260 gallons of water it uses to manufacture its products. That's like $115 for this much water. Heineken has a water permit that allows it to draw about 6 million cubic meters of water every year in the state of Nueva Leon, which by the way, was the same state that Mexico declared a water shortage as a matter of national emergency in 2022. And it's not that these companies are solely responsible for using large quantities of water. Nearly 80% of Mexico's water is spent on industrial agriculture, growing fruits and vegetables and practicing dairy farming. Even the mining industry has faced criticism for overusing the water resources. But the argument that these industries contribute to Mexico's economy and therefore should be allowed to use this water is not sustainable. The country needs better systems for water irrigation or rainwater conservation, amongst other things. It needs more regulation on how big corporations use its water. And what makes this entire situation situation more urgent than ever is climate change. Another major storm is gaining strength off Mexico's west coast. Mexico record breaking temperatures. There are multiple warnings for people to stay inside. In Mexico, it's leading to floods in the north and cyclones in the south. For example, in the northern part of the country, we don't have the rainy seasons that we used to have with these two months or three months of constant raining. And what we're seeing now is that this season has reduced considerably. And now we're having the same volumes of precipitation in a very short period of time. So we're having floodings. And then what we're seeing in the southern part of the country is that we're having these uh, climatic extreme events like cyclones. And we don't have the capacity talking about the infrastructure installed or the capacity in the watersheds to control these huge volumes of precipitation. The takeaway of this story is not that there's no future and everything is hopeless. Local initiatives like Isla Habana are working on the ground as we speak. But at the end of the day, time is running out. And if concrete actions aren't taken more quickly to build water infrastructure and regulate private use, Mexico has a bigger challenge to face in the future.